I'm Kenny Keller, creator of Helicopter Online Ground School, and we have an awesome presentation to, uh, for you today with Rex Alexander. I flew with Rex for uh, several years in EMS. I've been instructing in helicopters for about 20 years, and during that time, the five-year period, I flew EMS, and I met Rex back at my first EMS job. He was a base manager there, and he introduced me to this cool tool the HEMS tool, and we're going to show you that. Rex is upstairs right now. We're trying out some new technology. Everybody's telling me that they're alive and ready to go. So we're heading inside. Team's in there. Camera's ready to roll. I know that during the five years that I flew EMS, we pretty much lived by this tool. You know, to be able to make a decision in the middle of the night and be in the air in 10 minutes, you had to have a quick way to look at the weather. So I believe Rex is ready to go. So we're going to walk right in here to the studio room now. All right, he's moving a couple things around there real quick. We'll get ready to go back to his camera in a second. I want to mention real quick our Helicopter Online Ground School Wall of Fame. We do private, commercial, CFI, and instrument courses online. This is many, many of our happy customers. So we are going to, looks like he's ready to go. Let's go with Rex. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Federal Aviation Administration's FAST Team webinar. Uh, today we are speaking about one of the best kept weather secrets in aviation. What we're specifically talking about here is a tool that was designed for one arm of the aviation industry, but we have found that it is an awesome tool for the entire industry. What we're talking about is the HEMS weather tool. If you've never seen it before, you're in for a treat today. This presentation for FAST Team is presented to you by Helicopter Online Ground Schools and 5 Alpha. Thank you again for joining us for a great webinar. We hope we'll, everyone will get a a lot of good information. We are really proud to present this. This is a weather tool that's been around since 2006. It's a great tool and everybody that finds it loves it. So we're going to get into it and go through some of the basics on where it came from and why it is such a good tool. So one of the things we look at is it was conceived in March of 2006. Why it was conceived was specifically out of the Medical Weather Symposium. Now, what was it meant to be and what was it meant to do? Originally, it was designed to help prevent controlled flight into terrain, CFIT. It was also loss of control and inadvertent meteorological conditions flight. This was one of the problems we ran into in the HEMS industry for a long time. A lot of accidents caused because of weather. A lot of very really smart people got together in Boulder, came up with this tool, and it was the birth of the HEMS tool in Boulder, Colorado in 2006. So this was developed by a group called INCAR UCAR RAL in under four months on time and on budget. INCAR stands for National Center of Atmospheric Research. UCAR stands for University of Atmospheric Research, and RAL stands for Research Applications Laboratory. Great group of people, did a phenomenal job on creating this, but also did a phenomenal job in keeping this thing viable and alive for a long period of time until we could get it into the system and get it fully funded. Now, what did it start out as? It originally started out in the Aviation Digital Data Service, or ADDS, which now no longer exists. It is a Java applet in its original form. It is now a HTML5 platform. It originally came out in November of 2006, so it has been around for a while now. So what makes this tool different than any other weather tool? Everybody out there that's a pilot or works in the aviation or is interested in weather has tons of different weather tools that they like, and all of them are good. Having been in the aviation industry almost 40 years, people ask, what weather do you like to get? I say, anything I can get my HEMS industry that was very visual. So that's what this came to is they wanted to make it more visual versus just reading text from METARs and TAFs. So it is a gridded ceiling and visibility assessment in areas between meteorological terminal aviation routine weather reports, METARs, and terminal area forecast TAFs reporting forecasting sites specifically designed for 5,000 feet and below. That was the area we're having the most problem in the HEMS industry when it came to accidents involving weather. Now, what is it? Well, the weather tool in itself is a supplementary weather product, and that's key, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The product 
is designed to increase situation awareness, to assist and be an addition to what you currently use. It's so limited area observations across broad areas between stations. What's that mean? So think about you're flying cross country, you're flying in an area that's remote and you have an AWOS station here, 30 miles over here you have another AWOS station. What it's trying to do is figure out what the weather might be in between those stations based on the information of the two stations. Or if there's three or four or five stations, it takes all that information into the system, runs it through an algorithm, and at the other end of the day spits out a best guess based on its algorithm and based on elevation. So it's a gridded ceiling and visibility assessment. It is not a reporting tool. So what it's not, it's not a report of an actual observation report or forecast. So always go use that information first, use this as an alternate as a supplementary product. That's what it's designed for. This is right off the website, and we'll show you that here in a minute. But this specifically says this product is for flight planning purposes only, should always be used in combination with ceiling and visibility. Information from official sources, such as METARS, AIRMAS, TAFs, and area forecasts. So you're always going to get your information on the weather there. This is a supplementary tool, again, that gives you something that's in a visual graphic format that is really easy to look at and understand quickly. In our industry, the HEMS industry, if you don't know what that stands for, this is a Helicopter Emergency Medical Systems. Now, we've changed that. Somebody decided that acronym was old and we needed to change it. Now it's HAA, H-A-A, Helicopter Air Ambulance. I personally preferred HEMS, but HA it is. So in that industry, we now look at this as a no-go decision maker. We use our normal weather, then we look at this, and we can say this is our no-go decision. Weather may say it's okay at the METAR, but we look at this and say, hey, based on this, we know that the weather is probably going to change, and rapidly so, based on what we're seeing from this information. Now, what it can provide. So when we look at all the different weather tools out there on the market today, free and paid for, what does it give you? So when we look at the weather tool, this is the weather data that it currently provides you. Now I didn't have every, list everything on here, but this is the short list. Flight categories, ceiling, visibility, radar, satellite, uh, convection, icing temperature, relative humidity, and wind, and additional stuff that you can actually on, lay on this. One of the really neat things about this tool is you can customize what you see and don't see. You can see everything or you can see only those things you're really interested in depending on what altitude and area you're flying in. Now, overlays available. So you can actually put all this wonderful weather on there, but you can also add these overlays. These overlays include METARs and TAFs. You can actually click on them and see what that says. Real time, uh, flight categories, PIREPs, SIGMETs, AIRMETs, TAFs, VORs, airports, highways, state and county borders, terrain, and on and on and on. So you can customize this thing down to whatever it is that your needs dictate. That's the really cool thing about this. So when we look at this product, who can benefit from it? So we've been using it in the HEMS industry since 2006. Everybody we've shown it to loves it. Uh, AOPA has actually put out a couple articles on this, brought it into general aviation. I know that at EAA, we actually had the folks from INCAR and the Aviation Weather Center give a presentation on this tool, but there's still a lot of people out there that have yet to see this tool. And every time we show somebody new about it, they're like, where has this been? So that's why we're doing this presentation today. So when we look at what type of aircraft you fly, whether it's a helicopter, airplane, float plane, balloon, Glider, Blimp, UAS, and drones love this tool because one of the key factors is it zooms down to ground level, street level, and you can actually really get down to a very finite area of mapping when it comes to what the weather's doing in your local area. Anyone flying below 5,000 feet, this is what this tool is designed for. Now, industries that love this, well, of course, the HEMS, now HA. Law enforcement, firefighting, forestry, agriculture, ENG, general aviation, all like this tool. Now, one of the things we're working on and trying to get everybody together on is change the name of the tool. One of the reasons people don't look at it is they see it as a HEMS tool 
Obviously, it doesn't apply to me because I'm general aviation. Nothing could be further from the truth. This tool is for anybody that flies below 5,000 feet. And we highly recommend that you take a look at it. So, now that we've given you a background of what it is, where it came from and why, we're gonna dive into it and actually show you what this tool can do. And we're gonna go through as much as we can, but I will tell you that we're not gonna be able to go through everything because there's so much. Keep in mind that there's a great tutorial online on the HEMS tool at the Aviation Weather Center. I highly recommend you look at that. And if you have any questions at the end of this, please don't hesitate. That's what we're here for. So where does the HEMS weather tool reside on the internet? Well, it is on the Aviation Weather Center's main website. So to get to that site, www.aviationweather.gov. Now, once you get here, what you're looking for is under tools. Go click on tools, come down here and go to the HEMS tool. Once you get to the HEMS tool, you're going to see a front page, ceiling and visibility precautionary use statement. Like we said, this is not a primary, this is a secondary weather reporting system. And what we talked about in the beginning is this line right here. This product is for flight planning purposes only. It should only be used in combination with sealing and visibility information from official sources, such as METARs, AIRMETS, TAFs, and area forecasts. Well, the thing you then have to do to get to the actual tool is acknowledge that you've read this and understand it. So there's a little button here that says, yes, I acknowledge, and it then lets me into the HEMS weather tool itself. So luckily today we have weather to look at here in the Midwest. Now, this is the front page. This is what you'll see when you open it up. So here you'll see across the top, it says HEMS Medical. Now, what you'll see across the top, when you first open it up, Helicopter Emergency Medical Services Tool. That's what this is. Now, some of the different tabs to go into and actually explore and get more information is the info tab over here in the far right. When you click on that, then you have other selections that pop up as well. You have the HEMS home that we were just on. This is the overview, but the other pieces you'll want to go in here if you're unfamiliar with this system is products. And it goes through all the different weather products that are in the system. And we won't go through these, it uh, has quite a few, but it explains a lot of the different products that are in that system. Now, the other tab, tutorial. We're going to go through a lot of information, but we're just going to scratch the surface today. So when you look at the tutorial, you're looking at the HEMS tool tutorial right here. There is a tremendous amount of information. And notice they have it hyperlinked so you can go through and find exactly what you're looking for. But it goes through all the different things that are on this tool, all the different things that it can do for you, how to interpret it, what it can't do as well. So a really very, very vast amount of information that you can display and interpret. And how you do this, totally up to you. Like I said, this site is completely customizable to what you want. So let's go back to the HEMS home. So first thing I want to look at is the tab that says weather. Over here on the far left side, what we can do is highlight what it is we want or not want. So I can turn... In this case, radar off. I can also, right now it's in flight category, I'm going to go to none. And I can choose and pick anything in this that I want to then display. Here in the overlay, right now, preset, it's got uh, flight category. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn pyreps off. And I'm going to turn sigmets off. Now I have a blank slate. I can zoom in and out with the mouse. I can zoom all the way out. And you'll notice... This has the entire world attached to it, but the HEMS tool is specific to the United States. You can get METARs and TAFs from other countries. They will show up. So when you click on METARs and TAFs, you'll see it populate all over the world. But the HEMS tool specifically is for the U.S. right now. If it may migrate to the uh, rest of the world, we don't know just yet. There's a lot to be done. Now, you can overlay different maps depending on what it is you're looking for. Go to overlay, I can put in highways, roads, counties, also some of the aviation maps, jet routes. I can also look at the uh, ARTCC boundaries as far as who controls what airspace. So I'm gonna turn on that map. 
One of the cool things with this is we can zoom in down to street level for the most part. So as we zoom, tool catches up. I'm going to zoom down here to where we're at today in Plymouth. We're at the Plymouth Municipal Airport. So you can see that we can actually get down to a low granularity when it comes to actually looking at the surface. Now, we'll zoom back out. I'm going to bring up some weather here. So let's look at satellite view. I can over superimpose that. You can see the uh, large uh, cloud structure that's here in the uh, Midwest that we're dealing with right now. Also, we can go down and put in radar over the top of that. Now, the radar is designed to actually play. The cool thing with this is there's something that you don't see that a lot of people does, don't know exists on this tool. Up here where you see the time stamp, if you hover over the time stamp, you'll see a slider open up. I can actually go back in time and look to see what was going on with that radar picture. And it'll play a short period of that so I can see what the track is. I can go farther back and it'll actually go farther back. in So you can actually see where something is trending and also whether it's building or dissipating. Really nice uh, feature on this. And then you have the radar loop you can pause it if you need to. So I'm actually back five hours. Now, go back here to where it's uh, current time. It'll show up there. It'll actually switch over to uh, Zulu time and the date. There are certain things on here that we actually can go into the future with. Radar is not one of those. So as you see that I go into the future an hour, radar disappears and so does satellite. What that allows me to do is certain tools will allow me to forecast it's really kind of neat that you're able to do that. Now, when we go back to the weather time, I'm going to turn off or go back to current time now. Everything pops back up. Let's go ahead and take the uh, satellite view and the radar view offline. So the weather layers that we can put on here, we have flight category. So when I click on that, look down here, you'll see the uh, bar show up down at the very bottom. Obscured, low IFR. IFR, marginal VFR. Those are the color-coded uh, categories that are now represented on this map. Now, so I've got flight category on here. I can go to ceiling. And then, down here, you see it's obscured, 0, 500 feet, 1,000 feet, 3,000 feet. Color-coded up here as well. We'll go on down to visibility. Color-coded also, we're at 0, half a mile, one mile, three miles, and five miles. Again, this is color coded. Go up here to the display on the time. We can actually go back in time. Now they're working on actually creating a possible loop for this, specifically to this category versus just clicking on it. But you can click on this and see whether it's increasing or decreasing. See, I'm an hour in front and everything disappears, right? Half hour, it will go out and forecast. There's real time. Now, once we get past visibility, we can get into icing severity, icing probability. Now, this time of year, we're not really worried too much about that. But you look at the other piece of this is when we're on visibility, it's only got one selection. Icing severity, icing probability, temperature, real humidity, and wind, you'll notice they all have the selectability of altitudes, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and 5,000. So if I click on 1,000 feet, we're not seeing anything, go to 5,000 feet, we actually do pick up icing, down here again, icing severity, you can see the color code, trace, light, moderate, and heavy. So Again, you can come back here and look to see where that's progressing, increasing, decreasing, really handy. We go to temperatures. So let's say I'm interested in what the temperature is at 1,000 feet. I can go here. We can look down here, see what the temperature span is. The entire United States or zoom in closer. Then we'll say, hey, what's the temperature at altitude? So we'll go in here to temperature at 5,000 feet and look at the differential between 1 and 2, or 1 and 5. Big difference. So you can see the gradients there. 
really handy because sometimes you look at um, the winds. When we look at winds, we look at the uh, close proximity of wind speed and then you look at the atmospheric pressure. Temperature can give you a, a lot of information if you pay attention of the differential between the temperature lines. The closer they are, more there are, more probability there is potentially hazardous weather in that area. So always, you know, additional thing you can pull from this information if you really know what you're looking for. So in the weather side, again, we can put on here whatever it is we want. On satellite, we can turn on the radar, and turn on a ceiling, visibility, or individuals. We can overlay it with a satellite. So a lot of good information that we can put up here for that particular purposes. Now we're going to look at the overlays. So we talked about this area having so having this area right here. What's out there? What what is what is available to us when it comes to weather information? So what we're looking at is look, okay, where are all those METARs? Where are all those TAFs? If I go to METAR TAF overlay. This one has the weather system set up so you can actually interpret the information based on the way it's uh, generated here. You got the wind barb with the wind speed and all the different information surrounding it. You can customize this to as much or as little as you want. One of the things you can do is if you curse over a METAR, click on it, it'll actually come up. So in this case, we have South Bend METAR, tells us at 251733 Zulu. 19 uh, winds at 190 gusts at uh, 12 knots, 10 statute miles visibility, a few clouds at 16, broken at 5,000, overcast at 8,500. So, all you got to do is, Chris, if those are those things that we talk about being primary weather reporting information, those are those. What this tool then does, when we look at it from this perspective, is you have the METARs. This is then taking and generating information in between those. So now we generated the information. So based on these, and you'll notice there's a different color on some of these METARs and TAFs telling us different types of weather criteria is met at those locations corresponding to these different color coded areas for ceilings and visibility. So that's what the tool really does in looking at interpolation. So when we zoom into this at this level, take this down, it populates to a certain level until it gets so close that it starts over uh, underpopulating. You zoom back out, you'll notice that it goes back out. Now it will get crowded at some point and then it'll shift. And you'll notice it'll shift the information so it doesn't overpopulate the screen. And then when you zoom back in, and you can zoom with the uh, key in the left-hand corner, or you can zoom with the mouse wheel at the same time, or click. You can click anywhere in here and zoom in, double-click, and it'll zoom down. And let's get rid of the METARs and TAFs. So flight categories, again, that's the METAR. Click on it. There's Plymouth. It tells us exactly what we're looking at. There's our visibility. I switch over to ceiling height, click on there, now same information. So it doesn't change. What we're looking at here is the visibility in between, but this is what the METAR is showing us as far as the actual location at the airport. Now, get rid of that. I'm going to zoom back out just a little bit here. One really cool aspect of this is it also pulls in PIREPs, pilot reports. See if there's any out there. So these pop up. You can click on one of those, get the PIREP. Tells you what's going on. It's a basically report of uh, turbulence, moderate, flight level. So right now they're reporting 000, so that must be on takeoff, I'm assuming. But it gives you the information where it's at, what was reported. There's several different PIREPs in here. Looks like uh, turbulence is the key but it'll also give any other type of pyreps that are out there. Uh, very handy when you're doing cross country or working even in your own backyard. We can do SIGMETs. Click on the uh, convective SIGMET box. It'll open up and give you all the information for that convective SIGMET. And 
Now we get into G, Aeromets, basically general aviation, gets a little crowded at that point. Again, all you have to do is click on this. You can see there's one for icing, there's one for turbulence, there's one for IFR. If I click on this one, it'll give me that icing airmet and give me all the information for that. And National Weather Service hazards. So down here you see something pop up flash flood warning. So there's even more information, not just aviation information, but also ground information that may pop up here, which is important. If you're going to some location that's got to have a flash flood, you may not want to land there today. So additional information that you normally don't find anywhere else. Wind barbs, when we look at wind barbs, it'll populate wind direction and wind speed. So here you'll see the, uh, the wind barb sticking up and you can tell based on the uh, length and number of the um, barbs coming off what the speed of the wind is. Uh, when we zoom out, you'll notice that they'll repopulate, and they'll get crowded, then they'll dissipate. Zoom out a little bit more, same thing. There's a little lag in the computer sometimes when you do this, so, but when, if, if it didn't do that, there would be so many wind barbs you couldn't see anything. So we see over here, we got a little bit higher wind speeds. Now if I zoom in, they'll also populate. I'll zoom down here just so you can see how far we go down to a zoom. So at one point, these wind barbs start getting further and further between. And here we're uh, down here, you'll see we're at one, one mile scale. Zoom down one more, that's 5,000 foot. Get down to 2,000 feet. There's a 1,000 foot scale. We lose all the wind barbs. So once you get really, really close to the ground, you're not going to see the wind barbs. But this is really nice. Um, we can get down with um, that. Add this into, say, the wind speeds at 1,000 feet. This will give you a good idea what you might uh, experience at a lower level. See, we have a little bit more increase in winds down here. You can tell at altitude. Uh, I know that right now they're working on bringing in winds from surface. That's not in here in a depiction on this, um, the chart. That's something that we're looking at specifically for the really low level work that uh, UAS and drone pilots are working with. Let's drop the wind barbs. So we have highways up here. You can also, it says roads, pretty close to the same until you really zoom in. Um, you can actually go into counties. I can get rid of this. If you're doing something a little higher level, there's all the jet routes. And if you're looking to say, okay, whose uh, airspace is this anyway? It'll actually tell you, you know, who, who owns this airspace. Also, a, a neat feature in here is uh, you can actually bring up all the nav aids. Now, if you see here, we can click on one of the nav aids. It'll bring up that information. So there's Goshen's Vortac. Gives you elevation and the frequency as well. And airports. What airports are in the general area? Now, same thing applies here. The farther out you zoom, the less information. The more you zoom in, the more populated some of this information becomes. So right now we're seeing the larger airports. Click on one of these, gives you the information for that particular airport. So we go up here, we're looking at Midway. There's all the information for Midway. It's populated. As we zoom down, we'll start to see more and more appear. Smaller airports, also some of the restricted airports or the private airports. And we zoom down a little farther. Now you start to see heliports pop up. You get the identifier and the information for the heliport. Now, if you watched us the last time we did this, remember that while this information is good information, always verify the information. We talked about the accuracy of the 5010 database. Guess where this tool pulls its information? It pulls its information directly from the same database that we were talking about that has errors in it. So there is a possibility that if you find a heliport or an airport that's private specifically, that's the key, it's private, it may or may not be 
accurate if somebody hasn't updated recently. So always validate and verify the information if you're using this. It's very, very, very important. And the last one, you can actually overlay and see what the shape and orientation of the runways in certain locations are. So there's South Bend, you can actually see what that looks like. So a lot of different things that you can do in overlays and then bring in the different things on the weather. And wind speed, we'll do that. And this will play back. So again, it is whatever you want to make this tool. I can overlay anything I want. I can take away anything I want. The key is what is important to you. So if you're flying low level, winds may be very important to you today. If you're flying in an area that may have some weather, ceilings and visibility may be important. If you're doing something that's very sensitive to temperature, temperature, humidity may be very important. If you're prognosticating out a couple hours, you look and say, hey, what's the fog potential? For this area. You can look at the uh, humidity, the dew point, and the temperature, play that forward, play that back. You can see, is it increasing or decreasing? What's the potential for that? So there's a lot of different things you can do with this particular tool that there are a lot of tools out there that do the same thing, but not one tool that brings all this information into something that's graphically represented where it's easier and quicker to identify issues. And that's the key that what we're looking for is identifying issues that may cause us an issue when we're flying. Great pre-flight tool before you go out. So we've talked about weather, we talked about overlays, views. What you're looking at here is you can actually customize and then save. So if I save this and reopen it, it will come up to what it is I customized it as. Now configuration, this is where we're not going to go in depth on this too much because there's so many different variables that we can choose from that it would take us a while to get through it all. But you can choose what variable you want. So if I want satellite map, I can choose satellite map and it'll pop that in there. Radar, what's my opacity? So I can actually change this, bring it down to 25%. I lost it. Radar, sorry. So I can actually change the uh, opacity, make it easier for me to see through. See how it uh, starts to drop down as far as its uh, visibility. I can see through that a little bit better. Same with weather, METARs and TAFs. Here's where you can actually select and unselect all those different pieces of information. So if I go through the METARs and TAF, it's right now everything's selected. I can select none. Now when I go back, populate METARs and TAFs. Now it's just the basic circle. I can still click on it, but it don't does not give me information. When I go back to let's see. Ah. When I go back to configure METARs and TAFs, select all. Notice how it changes. So now I have a lot more information that I can see easily, configure it however I want it. A very, very flexible tool. You can also pick what it is you want for pie reps. Do you want turbulence? Do you want icing? What's the range you want it? You can actually set it so you don't get all those high altitude alerts. You only get the low altitudes alerts. How old is the uh, pie rep? Um, it, it is again totally flexible and customizable. Same with SIGMETs. Uh, we can pick and choose what SIGMETs we will see. Same with AIRMETs. Hazards, warnings, we can go in here and pick all or just warnings. Another thing that's really nice about this, while I wouldn't uh, swear that the accuracy is significantly great, we do have latitude and longitude down here. If you see as I move the cursor, you'll see that change down here. So you can see the latitude and longitude changing as I'm moving. So you can actually pull that off and find it on another computer or on another map or a GPS. Or doesn't have a search function yet, but that may be something we look at down the road in the future. 
One of the other really important things that we want to make sure that we impress upon everybody is we want to get as much feedback as possible on what you like about this tool, what you'd like to see the next generation of this tool look like, and any suggestions or recommendations you may have or issues that you may have. To do that, there's this button up in the upper right hand corner. Click on the feedback. It'll open up basically a place where you can put your information and whatever the message is that will then go to the people at the Aviation Weather Center. And they're a great group of folks. They do a fantastic job. Every time I put anything in here, I've gotten notification back within a week. And a lot of times they've actually implemented some of the recommendations I've made. I would say that if you see something you really, really like, they'll give them positive feedback as well, not just negative. If there's something you say, hey, could you do this? They'll take another advisement. If they can do it, they will definitely try and do it. Uh, there are certain things that take longer, and there's certain processes that certain things have to go through. And always keep in mind when you're dealing with the aviation industry, the FAA, and weather reporting, there's a lot of hoops that these folks have to jump through to make sure that the risk exposure is not so great that they get in a situation where they're in trouble with it. So there are some things that do take time, but they're always interested to hear feedback from anybody at any time. So please don't hesitate to give the feedback. So in closing, we would like to say thanks again for the uh, FAA safety team, the FAST team for allowing us to do this presentation. Uh, we really like to give back to the people in the aviation industry as much as we can. Also, I'd like to say thank you to um, all the people that helped put this together. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact either myself or Kenny. Our addresses are on the screen. Also, when we look in what's going on down the road in the future with the HEMS tool, uh, there are some new things that are being trialed right now that uh, hopefully we'll be able to report on in the near future. Uh, there's a lot of testing going on with some new products that are very, very exciting. I'd like to put a shout out to all the people involved with the HEMS tool at multiple different agencies that really made this come together over the years, uh, the least of which is probably our friends out in Boulder, the National Center of Atmospheric Research, NCAR, UCAR, RAL, uh, also the Aviation Weather Center, NOAA, and especially several very, very uh, awesome people in the FAA. And probably one of the groups out there that kept this thing alive and didn't let it die on the vine that helped spearhead the second uh, HEMS Weather Summit in 2013 was the National EMS Pilots Association. A special thanks to them to make sure that this tool is functioning and is in operational today. So future operations, we'll have another infrastructure summit for the U.S. Helicopter Safety Team in February. Weather's gonna be a huge topic. HEMS tool is one of the things we're gonna talk about. One of the things we'd like to see is if you use this, it's again an HTML format. HTML format is something you can use on a smartphone or an iPad. However, it is cumbersome. What we're hoping to do is look for a way to take this to the next level and get an application that then brings this information to you from the HEMS tool in a similar way that what you deal with when you're working straight off the computer. So we're hopeful with that, but we'll probably have to go through some government funding and some other regulatory issues that are yet to be discovered, but we're gonna be working on that probably in February. Hopefully we'll have some really good information to share with you. Again, thanks to the FAA safety team for allowing us to do this. We really appreciate your attention. And now we're gonna open it up to question and answer. So if you have a question, you have a comment, please, let us know. We're here for you. We are more than happy to answer any questions we can. If we don't have the answer right away, we will track it down and get back to you. Thanks again for watching. We really appreciate this. You guys have a wonderful day. Be safe. All right, another awesome presentation by Rex. Please say something to Rex uh, in the chat box. A reference his presentation today. That's the second one he's done for us. And we just can't appreciate or uh, Thank Rex enough for traveling over here to do our second webinar for us. He did the first one, and then he did this one again today, our second one. So Rex is heading over there to answer some of your questions in the box.
again, say something to Rex for joining us today. It's awesome. If you're interested in learning more about Helicopter Online Ground School, as far as our private, commercial, instrument, or CFI courses, you can go to helicopterground.com to learn more about those. We'll be available in the chat for about 20 more minutes answering some questions. We'll put the, uh, our emails back up on the screen for you if you want to get a hold of one of us direct for something specific. You want to ask Rex a specific question about today's presentation or the heliport uh, presentation they did for us. So we'll be around for about 20 more minutes. Answer as many questions as you can. Email us if uh, with any questions, and we will see you in the next video.